So we're midway through the year here, and BlackBerry is seemingly on its last legs, at least in terms of the handset market. What once was a widespread and popular smartphone brand are all but done these days, and the last push of a few years back with a few Android-powered Blackberries are starting to run their course. It's quite a thing to see Blackberries decline, as the Blackberry handsets themselves have never been necessarily bad phones and are actually excellent made, high quality devices and the keyboards, the physical keyboards on the Blackberry are an endearing feature that many people will vehemently stand by. So what happened is that Blackberry was somewhat a victim of the times and for a smartphone industry that moves quite fast, Blackberry just didn't move fast enough. As smartphones are constantly evolving, other companies have adopted Android faster and more efficiently than BlackBerry did, and they've also been developing modern features like larger, more pixel-dense screens and high-quality camera arrays. The BlackBerry Passport has none of these, but what it does have, and what it has to the test of time, is a very unique design. And it's in this design to which I'll make the argument that the BlackBerry Passport still offers a lot of usability in today's smartphone market that you just can't get anywhere else. This video will feature the BlackBerry Passport, which is just about as unique as you can get when it was released and even now in terms of smartphone design. It doesn't have the latest Snapdragon chip, nor does it have the highest or largest density pixel screen. It doesn't have 32 gigabytes of RAM, and of course it doesn't have a camera array on the back. But I'll make the argument that there's a few specific things that the BlackBerry Passport does based on its design that still makes it extremely usable. So if you were ever interested in Blackberries or had a specific interest in the BlackBerry Passport, keep watching this video as you may be surprised on just how usable and how unique the design on the Passport is. Some of its form factor and design elements really make it a one-of-a-kind device that if you can get your hands on at a good price, might be a great option for you as there's nothing like it on the market today. It's becoming quite a common modern misconception that with the downfall of the BlackBerry 10 operating system and with RIM slowly phasing out a lot of its services that were built for its own operating system, that you can't get a lot of basic apps on BlackBerry 10 devices like the BlackBerry Passport. The truth of the matter is that the BlackBerry Passport actually has an active Android runtime environment on its operating system. So what this means is that a lot of the more popular apps and daily driver apps that you'll use on modern Android smartphones will actually work on the BlackBerry Passport. The first one that comes to mind and the one that I get asked about the most is of course YouTube. There is a working version of YouTube on the BlackBerry Passport and it fulfills all the basic functions of a modern YouTube app that you would get on an Android phone. So if you'd like to take advantage of this larger screen and unique form factor for watching YouTube videos and you're worried that you might not be able to do this on the BlackBerry 10 operating system, then worry no more as YouTube does indeed work on the BlackBerry Passport. Check out my series of other videos on working Android apps on the BlackBerry Passport just to see what apps are available on the BlackBerry Passport that are fully functioning. You might be very surprised. And also, if you have apps that aren't on my series of videos that you know to be working on the BlackBerry Passport, don't forget to leave a comment below for other BlackBerry fans watching this video. What was a large contributing factor to BlackBerry's success back in the day were that they were just awesome quality handsets. If you got a BlackBerry, you knew you were getting a very well-built device that does what it's supposed to do and does what it's designed to do, first and foremost, and that is to be a phone. And that definition hasn't changed, even with the ever-evolving face of smartphones. With any given smartphone, you're still going to need to be able to insert your SIM card, join a network, get internet, make calls, and send text messages. And BlackBerry, with the Passport, like all the other handsets in its storied line, does this well. The Passport was an excellent phone for being a phone when it was released, and it's still an excellent phone today. Inserting your kit SIM is quite simple. 
as there's a detachable SD card tray that you don't need a special SIM tool to detach. How often do you see that on a modern smartphone? So, if you need a backup phone and want to be able to access the SIM tray without having special tools with you all the time, the Passport might make a great option for you. In terms of call quality, the call quality on the BlackBerry Passport is excellent, and navigating calls and contacts in BlackBerry 10 on the Passport's 1 to 1 aspect ratio screen, using the screen and or the touch sensor in the keyboard is a complete joy in and amongst itself. Text messaging, of course, is also great as well, as you have a full QWERTY physical keyboard to send text messages to your friends and contacts. So, if you use a phone mostly for in its intended original purpose, as a phone, or if you send a lot of text messages during the course of the day, then just picture yourself typing on this thing. It's perfect with the largest screen and arguably the most comfortable physical keyboard that's ever been put into a smartphone. You still can't get anything like the Black BlackBerry Passport's keyboard anywhere today. So for this reason and this reason alone, I use a BlackBerry Passport for work text more than any other smartphone that I own. There's just something about having this screen and having a full-size keyboard to thoughtfully and easily type out my text that makes it different than other smartphones on the market. And for this reason, I wouldn't trade my Passport for anything. So in closing here, the BlackBerry Passport is still an awesome device. It's very usable for me for the things that I use it for and I hope it will be for you as well. The design and form factor, in my opinion, has stood the test of time and there's really nothing like this keyboard and screen combination on the market today. Apps are certainly a challenge, but some of the more basic features and daily driver apps that you use are actually still working on the BlackBerry Passport. And of course, there's the keyboard. I would not trade this BlackBerry Passport keyboard for anything in the world. There's just something about typing out text messages and other longer documents on this keyboard that has not been replicated, even with the clone of the BlackBerry Passport, the Unihertz Titan, which is a valiant effort at replicating the BlackBerry Passport's phone factor, doesn't quite do the trick in terms of the comfort and ease of use of typing that the BlackBerry offers. So what do you think? Do you have your own experiences with the BlackBerry Passport? How usable has it been for you in today's cell phone market? Leave a message down below. Don't forget to subscribe. And thanks for watching.